By this point in our series, you should have installed via Hyper-V or VMware two virtual machines. As you can see, I'm using Win 2012R2, and I've created two virtual machines, MIIMDC001 and 002, DC for domain controller. Now, also, you should have renamed your computer computers to names that you're willing to have as the Active Directory names of your domain controllers. So that should have been done. Now, before we fire up these machines, we have to actually do some preparation inside Hyper-V to prepare for these machines to be domain controllers. Now, part of this is Microsoft best practice. First of all, if I go into my virtual switch manager, you'll see that I have that switch, which is an external switch, which binds a virtual switch from the virtual machine to the physical machine so that in this case, it had connectivity out to the internet in order to get all the updates. This time around though, I wanna actually create a private switch. A private switch, as you can tell, is a switch that allows the virtual machines that run on this physical computer to communicate amongst themselves, but not with the physical computer, the base computer. So that's what I'm after. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give that a name. It's gonna be MIIM private for private switch, V switch, so that I know that this is going to be a private virtual switch. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pause while I put in a description. <coughs> so here is my notes. Now again, documentation is hugely important anytime you're working with computers. This is a virtual private switch in Hyper-V that will allow the virtual, that should say machines, on this instance of Hyper-V to talk to each other, but not with the physical or base server on which Hyper-V is running. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. So I have that virtual switch. The next thing I need to do is go into the settings of one of my machines, and I'm actually gonna bring up the settings of both my virtual machines so that we can look at both of them. Let me get the settings up for the other. And so we'll start with MIIM DC1. Now the first thing I need to do is create an additional hard drive. So I'm gonna choose SCSI controller, I'm gonna choose hard drive, and then I'm gonna choose new. Now if you notice, this is on my MIIM DC. So I'm gonna walk through the new virtual hard disk wizard. I'm gonna allow it to be dynamically expanding because again, I don't need the performance and I wanna conserve space. I am actually going to call this the MIIM DC 0001-WIN2012R2 SysVol. This is what is needed for me to install the system volume files for Active Directory as it's best practice that those not be on the root drive. So I'll choose next. I don't need this much space. 10 gigabytes should be more than ample in my environment. So I'll choose next. I'll review the information and choose finish. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video while I do it on the other server. You'll need to do it on the other server as well. So as you can see by the summary here, I have a new VHD on MIIM DC002 as well. So I'll say finish. The next thing we need to do is we created that new virtual switch. And as you can see, I only have the one network adapter here. And what I need to do is add another one. I'll come up to add hardware. I'll choose network adapter and add. Here, I'm gonna choose that MIIM private switch that I created, and I'm gonna apply that. I need to do that on this machine as well. So I'll come over here and add that network adapter. This is the network adapter that we are gonna configure with a 172.16.0.1 network. So I'll apply it here. I'll say okay. And then I'm gonna pause the video while I fire up the two machines. So now that I have both machines running, I know the updates are installed. If I go to a local server, I can check that I've given these machines the correct server name that I want the next thing I need to do is go ahead and go into what I know is the Ethernet 2. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're on the right one. This is my base network, the physical connection to the internet. 
and this is going to be that virtual private switch. So the first thing I like to do is come in here and rename this to the MIIM private v switch network. <coughs> and as you can tell, I've done that on both machines. Now I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to come into properties and I'm going to set a static address for that connection. So I'm going to say use the following IP address 172.16.0.1. Servers always need a static IP address. It is best practice, especially for your domain controllers. These IP addresses cannot change. I come down here, the default gateway that I'm going to use in this case is going to be this server. And then finally, for the DNS, I'm going to use this server. Now, DNS is not currently installed on this server, but as I go ahead and configure our domain controller in the next video, it will become a DNS server. So I'm going to pause while I go over the other server and configure its IP address as well. Now, if you notice on the second address here, I've given it just the next address in the series, 172.16.0.2 with the first server's IP as the gateway. And the most important thing here to make Active Directory communicate without going through a bunch of steps is to have the preferred DNS server point to the first server. We're going to install Active Directory role and then configure the server, promote it as a domain controller and configure Active Directory on the first server. Then as we do it on the second, because it's going to refer out to DNS here, it's going to be able to find our login credentials as we configure our redundant and second server. So at this point, I'm simply going to say OK. I'm going to close these dialog boxes. And the other thing we have to do, notice how it's wanting to connect with that other. I can say yes here. These two machines, that indicates that I know that these two machines should now be communicating on that private virtual switch. The next thing we need to do is, if you remember, we created a new virtual hard drive. So if I right click here, I come into disk management. I'm going to see that drive here. However, just like putting a physical drive into a server, this drive has not been instantiated and brought online. So I'm going to right click and bring it online. I'm then going to right click again and initialize the disk. I'm going to go ahead and pick the default GPT, good partition, not that I have terabytes and terabytes, and I'll say OK. At this point, it's unallocated, and you may be aware that we actually have to create a partition on the drive. I'm going to right click and choose simple volume. I'm going to say next. I'm going to let it choose the entire 10 gigs. Here, I'm going to pick a drive letter of S, and that'll make sense in a second. S as in sysvol. I'll choose next. It will be NTFS. It will be a default. And here for the volume label, I'm going to say sysvol. This is where we're going to put the Active Directory database and sysvol files when we configure Active Directory in the next video. So I'll choose next and finish. And I'll pause while I do it on the second server. So here I am on the second server. And I'm creating that new simple partition, NTFS, default, and sysvol as well. I choose next, and it's going to format the sysvol partition. So at this point, we have done all of the pre-configuration items that we need to do to prepare these servers to become Active Directory domain controllers. In the next video, we'll go ahead and install the role of Active Directory, and then we also need to do the configuration of Active Directory as well. I hope to catch you in the next video. Take care.